Kara Irvine here with Kara at Simply Organized Chaos and we are with a friend of mine who happens to be a very talented artist. Her name is Pam, I always am going to do this, Fair, Fair Warren. Warren and she and I connected a few weeks ago to talk about the importance of art and as a lot of you know art is very important in regards to education, um, emotions and really allowing people to kind of express themselves in art and there's lots of different forms of art people paint people get tattoos people draw sculpt you can pretty sculpt, much do anything anything and it, it's a way to express yourself yeah. right so Absolutely. we tied it together with wine because, because who doesn't like wine? Oh, we've got several. We're going to drink wine. later. <laughs> yeah. um, but before we get started on that, why don't you tell our viewers a little bit about yourself, how you got involved in art, and kind of what it brings to your life. Oh, gosh. That's a, that, that's a whole lot wrapped all up quickly. So art to me, my grandfather was a self-taught artist, and he always would paint or sculpt or do things like that on the side, especially when I was at the cottage. I'm going to be honest, where do I look on these sorts of things? Right I'm going to look at the camera. You just I'd rather look at you <laughs> because I'm a speech pathologist by right. training. So communication to me is like this. Important, so, okay. but we can kind of look We're going to have to look live over here. Yeah, so I'm like still learning, though, so this, this is new for me. So my art background really began informally with my grandfather. I don't have any formal art training. I would always dabble with art. I would sketch, especially in the summers when we did not have TV or, or internet at all. So I would always do a little bit in the summers, but to actually really do stuff. I do <laughs> yes, there's only so many comic books that you can actually really read exactly. at that stage. And then the other thing was, is when we moved down to the United States, I'm originally from Western Canada, there was not a lot for me to do. We didn't have children yet. I was waiting on my work visa, so I started to take art classes at that time absolutely loved it and then got into watercolors then three kids came along and work and life and things got busy so art got put a bit on the back burner but i would always take classes i would always paint but very very little i was not as active into it sure. and i didn't have a daily or weekly gosh probably not even a monthly plan for it and then COVID hits and all of a sudden life you had all this time and I had a lot of time all my volunteer commitments all my work everything kind of slid off and that's when I really started to get get into art and not only play with watercolors play around with acrylics work with casein so I work in three different mediums that's fantastic and I, I really like it and I'm working on I mean you always have to draw drawing is the foundation yes. to art that is one thing I need to work on improving and then I met up with groups of artists online. I think that was one of the really neat things that COVID provided oh, was right. a different opportunity right. to establish relationships in a different way. So I joined a group called Leveling Up and I have been working with master artists through that group. I'm in three different groups and it's just been fantastic and honestly life changing. So that is my art journey and now art is, a part, art is a part of my life it is really what i want to do for the next for when i grow up when you grow up yeah because we that's always want to really know wanna do. we always want to really know what do. we're going to be when we grow up i love being a speech pathologist but i think that i'm looking at slight change in careers you which know, would be kind of fun absolutely yeah so you and i met a couple of weeks ago mm -hmm. and kind of talk about this opportunity yeah and, and the wines. And the wines. So one of the things that we talked about at the very beginning is why people buy wines. So like, why do you go like when you well, go and get I, a wine? I share. I shared with Kara at that time that when I was in grad school, we would love to get together with a group of friends and have wine, but we were dirt poor and couldn't <laughs> afford we all? a whole lot. <laughs> And we used to buy wines by the label. That was how we bought wine. So even back then, we would take a right. look at what label was interesting and fun. And that was one of the criteria, as well as the cost, as to <laughs> how, we would, how we would buy wine. So I love looking at wine labels. Exactly. I will spend time either at the grocery store or at the wine stores and just sometimes look for the most interesting label. Yes. And yeah, and sometimes it still depends on the cost <laughs> as to what as to what I will what I you'll will buy. buy. Yeah, exactly. So to me, art has a very visual, visceral feel mm -hmm. to it. There's a lot of emotion tied up into it, and I think smart wine producers are figuring <laughs> that out, or they've already figured it out. You don't just want mm -mm. a kangaroo on a label or a, bare, a barefoot. 
that's what originally drew me to a bottle of wine. Was it's a barefoot. Bare foot. Right. And it was also the dead of winter in Canada. So the idea it left of you a to bare the beach. Foot, <laughs> yes, it thought of beach and that was what we wanted was fun. That's awesome. Yeah. Well, and we talked about like people will purchase wine for three different reasons. They've enjoyed it at a friend's house and that's kind of what they're drinking or they've reached out to another friend um, and asked for a specific recommendation, whether say you're buying a gift for somebody who's like a cab drinker or a Pinot Noir drinker or a Chard drinker, because Shards are kind of hard. That's a tough one. It's a tough one to That's pick for specific yeah. um, people's palates. Um, and then the third reason is what you just hit on. It's the label. But what a lot of people don't understand about wine labels is winemakers and vintners that make the wine and the companies that produce the wine have really taken notice um, in the art. So they have like art directors, they have artists that they work with. Well, and you were to telling create me these. that they also have emotional ties. Absolutely. To the wine and the labels and things, and there's always a story behind them, like the field house. Was so this, such a really cool story that you were saying. So this um, label, field house, this is, I gifted you a bottle of wine to try for mm -hmm. an event you were having. Mm -hmm. And without really even knowing the story behind it, just with the name, she said she connected with it being very family oriented and deep in your roots. And yeah. ironically, that is actually the story behind this label and the importance of family and the importance of just keeping your family together and knowing that it's the most important thing in the world. Um, and then we also talked about, I love my dogs, right? So I have lots oh, of dogs. Oh, I, I love the dogs. See, I would buy this one just based on the on the face right there. Right. So I this, don't have a dog myself, but I mean, not just to me. Oh my goodness. Just so this so is cute. actually our founder's dog, Pip. And oh, Pip is a course. part of a grape, and he is the, the, winery, the, blah, 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 the winery's dog. Yeah. So he walks around the office and goes and lays under everybody's, and so they named a label after him. It is a Scout Circle exclusive, which yeah. means it's only in our wine clubs I see. when you get that particular label. And then we have a whole other label that's Dove Hunt Dog. This one, again, pays homage to the memories of um, our founder going hunting with her grandfather and her dad. So, And every label has a, another type of hunting dog. And oh, so that's, you... That's perfect literally you could get the whole series for a hunter yeah. and they would think it's amazing yeah so all right then the other thing so you have beautiful artwork you said you work within three different mediums mm -hmm. watercolor acrylics and casein casein it's not it's actually a very old painting medium but it's not very common yeah um, anymore it's a milk based casein is a milk based paint. Ooh, so interesting. yeah so that's the difference is that you can work with water with all of them but it's the binder in them okay that makes them different and unique so what you see behind you are actually right here yeah these are acrylic paintings the binder okay. is more of a plastic polymer interesting that's in them and usually for acryl acrylics you work on a canvas or a clay board or a board right even when it, if it's been primed correctly you can do that watercolor you're working on primarily paper right um, you can work they've got watercolor canvas they've got aqua board that you can use as well but watercolors are I find for me are best on paper so that's and what you will have see on the back here because yeah. I can yeah. stick them up as you can tell with really fancy um, painters tape, painters but, tape. It, but it works. Yeah. Um, but watercolors, because there are anything on paper, you mm -hmm. have to put behind glass. So that's why watercolors are always behind glass. Is they are on paper, they need to be protected, so they are framed and they are behind yes. glass. Whereas with acrylics, these have all been well. These ones haven't. That one hasn't been sealed yet. You said that one's drying from last that night. That one was drying from <laughs> last night. I still will probably go back into that one. I still see some areas that I'm not <laughs> happy with. So it's it's evolving. Right. But for one of like this, this one is actually finished. It's been sealed, um, so it can go directly on the wall, right. like that, or on a shelf, or what what have you, however you wanted to display that. And then the casein, I don't have, but there is. I don't know if we'll see it here. unless you bring it in. I'll bring it in. So this is a sample of casein, so you can get some very velvety looks with Ooh. this type of paint. I like and how it's actually smooth. on a board. Okay. And so I worked hard to get it smooth. I'm still learning this one. This is this is my summer project. Colors. So I love the colors, but it's it's new for me. So like anything, you're always a little trial and error. Gotta yeah, try it and, and work on it. So exactly. And those are the three mediums that that I work with. I like I, I don't do oils. 
Um, at least not yet. I just did <laughs> not. I, my grandfather did oils. Right. And that's and what it's he very, did. And those are very pliable paints. They are. And actually acrylics are more pliable than watercolors. Right. Watercolors I find are a little different that way. He and it's fun to electric. kind of play with them, which you can blend yeah. with and, and things yeah. like that. So those are the different ones. So I always like to look at the labels and some of them are, you know, photography, right. which is fantastic in an art form in itself. And then some of them are also have some of the other art components to them. So I wanted to show you this one because you had this gorgeous painting of kind of the wilderness mm -hmm. and the woods. And we yeah. actually have a mixable. So it kind of is it's a mixable. A mixable is something you can mix with maybe margarita mix, or maybe oh. you mix it with soda and a lime, or maybe you mix it. Oh, like a spritzer sort of thing. Kind but of a, a spritzer. So it's great base. So think of it more like a liquor. Okay. But it's great based. It has no chemicals in it. I was kind of thinking about that. And you'll have to stay tuned for the next episode of this series, Perfectly Paired, to learn more about why this is a better choice than your hard alcohols that you can find in the stores. Oh, there, there you go. go. Now I'm intrigued. So, it, and the story behind that is kind of just finding yourselves. And, and to me, see, this is very watery. Yes. So that's what I like about this one, is it reminds me of some of the water leading in your path there. And yep. then this one, of course, same sort of thing, but I like how they've got some of the organic branches, uh, you know, from a conifer behind it. So, exactly. So yeah. this this actually is a little bit earthier undertones, oh, so then whereas this is a little cleaner. But actually, I love that you, so this is also the perception of art. I love how she saw water in this label right here, mm -hmm. but actually it's um, those balanced stones oh. that you see kind of in nature and they, they just perfectly balance your life even though it's a little chaotic you just find those very yeah. perfect yep. spots yeah and so that's actually and we see the imagery you see some of those towers too you know I'm originally my family cottage is Canadian Shield area in Canada and we would see some of these stone things I wish I could do that out. like I can't find the balance <laughs> I can never find the stone I, I, balance. Well, I think we're all striving for a lot of balance. Right balance now. would be good. Our, all of us have our balance issues. Exactly. We're all off. So um, we connect our wine. So the one thing I love about wine labels that I think people don't really catch on to, um, not that people are not smart, but I, I think it just passes them by, is if you have a wine collection, maybe it's displayed wine, maybe it's in your wine cooler, maybe you keep empty bottles, you have a living art gallery in your home at all times. And so with every story behind every winery, every uh, vintage, every label that goes behind it, the stories behind all of the labels um, speak to the heart, speak to the passion that all of these winemakers have. And you truly get to have an art collection without really even knowing that you have one and knowing that you can tell the stories behind them. So we are going to wrap up there and take into effect that we have these beautiful art collections in our home that just like an artist, they're gonna speak volumes in regards to your passion, your love, your emotions, and, and really taking away from what wineries want you to walk away from your wine. Because again, we pick wine off of labels <laughs> most of the time. So. Um, give yourself a quick shout out that people can find you on Instagram. Sure. Um, as, as Kara said, my name is Pam Fairwarren. My Instagram handle is at Blue Pixie Art, B L U E P I X E Art. And you can find me on Facebook that way. And also, I have a website and it's the same www.bluepixieart.com. And, and folks can buy your art you on the website. website. Uh, right? Quite a few of these pieces are already on there. So they are on the website. They will be, there's a few pieces that I'm going to be selling hopefully this weekend if I get exciting through Instagram. And yeah, that's, and I do commissions as well. So this, it's very exciting. Wonderful. I absolutely love you it. know, one of the things I love about her art is that you can start your art collection, not with one of those really big, like 36 by 24. You can really start no. to appreciate art on a smaller scale to build your art collection. 
Um, I've noticed on her wall, she's got little, are those like four by four? Yeah, they're floral minis. So and then you're right. You can absolutely, art needs to appeal to you. You need exactly. to go with what tugs you. It doesn't always have to match your decor. Right. You need to fill your home with things that make you feel good and spark joy. Yes. So uh, <laughs> there's a lot of, there's quite a few. So there's some four by fours. There's some six by sixes. I work with all different sizes. Yes. And they are very affordable. And they start at roughly $50 and then That's on up. Right. And then there's some that they can't see in the background here that are probably 24 by 36. And I've yes. got a few in the works that are much larger than that. And thank you so much for six, opening your so. studio today. Oh, thank like, you. This, this is where, this is where she works. Every, every time she has a chance to paint, we are sitting this is in it. her studio. And it's, it's, it's real. It's not, a, it's not a room, y'all. This is actually like a big hallway in my house. So it's very open. And I'm just really impressed that my... People who are all home because <laughs> nobody has come through here. Yeah, so. That's fantastic. So yeah. again, people can find you on Instagram, Facebook, and your website yeah, at Blue Pixie yeah. Art. Pixie Art. And if you guys are interested in learning more about clean crafted wine and the stories behind the labels, you can also reach out to me through this Instagram post, or you can go to uh, my website www dot simply organize chaos dot com and there's a link on the home page to learn more about clean crafted wine so you guys have a great afternoon and thanks for joining us today well and stay tuned maybe we might partner in the fall and we might do an art class featuring wine I love so it. So there might be something you know, like that I, coming I up. I want to know what kind of label maybe you would come up with like if you had to create because a label, maybe we'll we'll. I'd have to try the wine first. <laughs> it's all here. We're so gonna go and then, then, then we can see. It would be a fun contest actually if we were doing a little a little label um, contest. Little label contest. Thank but you. we can try it when like, <laughs> if we do a, a little uh, acrylic pouring session. It'd be fantastic. That might be fun. So pair with wine. So stay tuned. You might see Absolutely. you again soon. Thanks for joining Thank us you today. For having me. Absolutely. Uh, take care, everybody. We'll talk to you later. Okay. Bye.